Hi guys, and a very warm welcome back to uh, Offshore Adventures. I'm Bob. Hi, and I'm Nikki. If you're new to the channel, then uh, please do consider subscribing to the channel. It's, of course, it's absolutely free. And if you like the films that we've done, and indeed like the film you're about to watch, then uh, please do give us a like. Uh, today, we're going to take you out and about in the Milford Haven estuary and cover a subject that a number of you have got in touch about, which is anchoring. Uh, we'll take you through some of the equipment that we have on this boat uh, and also uh, once we're out and about uh, in the Haven estuary uh, on some of the techniques that we use uh, when physically anchoring, which hopefully will be of use to you. So in terms of the uh, anchor locker itself, um, that's just a straightforward single catch there, gas strap which uh, just helps it up as you, uh, as you lift. And then inside, uh, obviously got here the uh, remote control uh, with the up and down options, very straightforward. Uh, down here, got the uh, manual uh, windlass handle, which just allows you to release the gypsy and therefore uh, get the chain or the uh, rope free flowing. I'll show you that in a moment. Um, and then we also keep um, our boat hook in here because there's plenty of space in this locker it goes uh, down and then if I turn around you can see it goes uh, right back there got the um, windless motor there this one is a 12 volt uh, V2 Lumar anchor windless sorry I should say um, there you've got your chain and your rope and then uh, down here you've got your uh, very key point which is your uh, the bitter end fitted to the boat the last of the rope hopefully never get to water or anchoring in water that is quite that deep and then uh, downside here you've got the uh, full safe pull um, which is this little catch here you can move this catch across and you see that little chrome piece there just popped out and what that does is if I lift this back out of the way um, what that does is just where the teeth go around the uh, the uh, lift there that just allows this small catch to engage with those teeth and therefore it in effect it locks the windlass uh, I've got a couple of uses that but particularly when the anchor uh, is down you can then lock that by just releasing the little red catch and then it stops uh, if the boat's moving around then in the wind it basically stops the strain on the uh, on the main windlass itself uh, because in effect it's pulling against the steel ratchets and not against the against the motor mechanism uh, underneath uh, that we've just seen uh, but I'll again, I'll uh, I'll show you that when we actually go into the anchor, go, go and do some anchoring. Um, that then just um, pushes back in, spring loaded, move this little red catch up into the vertical position, and that just then keeps that clear and allows you then to um, to then lower the anchor using the motor without, of course, it locking on the uh, on the ratchets, and then. Uh, here you've got uh, just uh, the anchor stop, which uh, which means if for any reason while you're underway something failed um, in the windlass, then with this secured onto the boat here, um, it would just prevent the anchor from dropping when you didn't want it to. Uh, this bit um, this bit here was fitted um, by Daniel at um, BHG, our suppliers for the. Uh, for the Mary Fisher 895 and um, it's a really handy product it's uh, if you can just see it there Oscar Lati um, it allows the anchor to completely rotate to swivel here and therefore as you're bringing the anchor in uh, you avoid any issues that may occur of the chain uh, twisting as it comes up which then sometimes makes uh, the anchor itself not quite seat properly here on the roller 
um, or twists or spins as it comes up. So this uh, this swivel here just takes all of that twisting out and is a very useful bit of kit, um, which is easy to add. You see there, you've just got the Allen bolt, fits into the end of your chain there, and similarly through there, through the bit there with a similar sort of um, Allen key style hefty old bolt there, about an M12 going through there. Um, so use a bit of kit, you've got the option to swap to um, to that swivel then uh, then yeah a handy bit of kit. We didn't have it, didn't have it on the 795 and the difference um, now that we have one fitted um, I definitely wouldn't, uh, wouldn't go back, uh, it's really useful. Then the um, anchor itself, that's a Danforth style anchor, this one you can just see there, it's got 14 kilos on there yeah that's the anchor weight so that's the uh that's the setup basically um and you can see under here there's all the motor mechanism and the uh and the wiring coming in the piece um this piece where it's uh where it's bolted to uh, is really thick probably about 25 mil thick um, so that it allows it to take the strain that uh, will come through the chain um, if your anchor is obviously starting to grip the ground below you the seabed below you then obviously it puts quite a big strain in and around this until of course you lock things off but even then there's a lot of strain if it's taking the weight of the boat remembering this is four and a half five tons of boat so this and what it's bolted to uh, obviously needs to be pretty sturdy And of course up on the helm you probably remember that uh, in addition just here you've got the uh, switch for the anchor as well so it allows you to raise and lower the anchor um, if you're single handed perhaps up at the helm although I have to say it's probably a lot better to be up at the front there right at the bow when you raise and lower the anchor you can see which way it's turning you can see it coming up from the seabed uh, you can of course see if you've got uh, anything accidentally caught in the anchor um, and you get a really good feel for whether uh, you know you need to uh, motor forward towards your anchor point or reverse um, all in all a much better spot really to be um, doing any anchoring operation up at the front rather um, than from here at the helm and uh, out at the back here where you've got your uh, battery cutoffs you'll perhaps remember back to our uh, earlier episode with the walkthrough of the boat that in here apart from your uh, three battery cutoffs two house one engine um, you've also got down uh, down here this is the um, reset for the windlass for the Lumar windlass at the front there um, they take a fair bit of power so it's an engine it's best to run the engine or be running the engine when you're uh, raising or lowering the anchor but if for any reason uh, it overheats or fails then this would be something to check that it hadn't uh, tripped up there. You can just read uh, off or an indication there if it's tripped. So if for any reason your windlass doesn't work, uh, then that's one one port of call to check. Make sure it hasn't tripped. Reset is back into that position. Um, I've also seen some advice uh, which says when you're underway, you can actually um, switch, keep this in the off position so that there's no danger of it uh, deploying itself. Um, at the moment we don't do that, we've not found a problem with it yet at all and indeed with the anchor stop up the top there, the little clip that clips onto the chain, it would seem to do that function admirably, um, albeit with the, the 795 and indeed with the 895 we've not had any sort of um, issues in terms of failure of the failure of the system which might allow the anchor to drop uh, when you're underway uh, but it's there if uh, if needed of course one reason why you might keep the um, keep the trip switch in the off position is that you'll see obviously you'll remember that the anchor switch itself the helm station anchor switch is here if you look at the uh, proximity of the seat uh, and or if you sat there, your knees there, it's not impossible for your knees to catch these switches occasionally. And obviously if you then uh, accidentally caught the anchor one, 
uh, it may set the anchor off. You've of course got the anchor stop, as I've said, on the chain up the front there that we've seen, um, but it would just prevent that uh, prevent that issue completely um, if you had the uh, trip switch off. Then any accidental touch of that would do nothing. So when you're um, considering where you might anchor or where you're planning to anchor, um, I always find it useful to have a scan of the chart ahead. So if, for example, we were coming into somewhere like Watch House Bay, uh, which is about a mile ahead, then uh, we can zoom in there. And what it tells us, uh, obviously from the little symbols there, chart symbols, you've got a G there, and then a bit further round, we've got here, we've got an S and a G and a B and a K, BK. Um, obviously they re relate directly to the um, IALA. This is obviously the uh, IALA charting system, slightly different in the US. Um, but it gives you the, uh, it gives you the detail of then um, what exactly those stand for and what's underneath you potentially when you go into one of those bays to anchor. So S for sand and M for mud and we saw SH earlier which is shells. So I tend to avoid uh, the uh, the rock rocky areas because obviously that's asking potentially for a bit of trouble. Asking for a bit of trouble perhaps uh, getting your anchor caught. So anything that's perhaps sand, mud, gravel, shells, similar. And of course you've got the, uh, it tells you the sort of how fine, medium or coarse, F, M and C there or hard. So you get a really good indication of what uh, of what's coming up. Um, so there, for example, as we see a BK, an S and a G. So we know there that um, we've got the BK for broken and we've got sand and gravel. So, you know, somewhere like that's probably going to be very, um, very suitable for uh, for anchoring. You'll recognise the name of that one. That's one spot we've been to before, Long Ore Bay. And um, a perfect spot to anchor indeed. So let's head for there and um, we'll take you through that anchoring process. And of course obviously we're using the Garmin um, 8410 here but uh, if you're using paper charts then obviously um, if they're IALA uh, based um, charts then you'll get um, the complete key and you'll get exactly the same markings on your paper charts. So, um, dead easy to plan perhaps the best spot for your anchoring and you see uh, and the other of course very good indication is unsurprisingly it uh, gives you a hint that there's anchorage there by actually printing it on the uh, on the chart so as we uh, as we come into uh, Long Ore Bay um, one really useful uh, indication is of course the yacht there which, uh, which is telling us, being a yacht, that it's probably sitting with the tide and therefore um, the obvious route of approach would be uh, from our starboard side and then uh, coming in at the same angle that that yacht is actually sitting. We obviously are more influenced by the wind um, as opposed to the tide but that certainly gives you a rough idea what might be a good approach angle. So um, uh, a very useful hint, particularly if you've got stuff um, already anchored uh, in your chosen spot is have a look at which way they're facing and look to uh, look to approach them from the sort of rear end if you like and we obviously know that we've got uh, BK and S and a G so that's broken and it's sand and uh, gravel so Long or Bay as some of you will remember from uh, our previous trips out uh, a lovely little sheltered spot uh, and we'll bring her in there coming in the same angle as the uh, as the yacht sat there and the other thing that uh, is worth a quick check obviously you see a different uh, chart datum levels here the blue being uh, two meters dropping of course to uh, rising ground so of course the next thing to have a quick check on is your tides and currents um, tides well we can see we're at 4.2 meters we've got um, two hours 37 to the next high tide so we're 4.2 meters above chart datum and rising and therefore that means that um, what is showing as two meters is obviously um, in the corner there just approaching seven and rising so that's us uh, 
coming up the rear end of the uh, of the yacht, same sort of line. We'll release our clip. Move the boat hook slightly and grab the remote. I'll also take the uh, take the pin out for that initial bit. You remember where this uh, where your anchor itself comes through this point and then tilts up so it can damage that pin. And all ready to go. Start to lower the anchor down. We know that we're in about five metres of water, so I'm just waiting for a couple of those little uh, coloured markers that we've got on the chain there to show that we'll have the anchor on the bottom and then I'll get Nicky just to engage reverse to see if we can get the anchor to, uh, to grab. Okay. If you just use uh, something to your starboard, it gives you an idea when the boat starts to move backwards. And then you can see now straight away the anchor chain starting to starting to pull out to the front. You can see it tensioning on the roller. And that's now a good indication, especially when you get that tension in the anchor there, that it's now gripping the seabed. Um, and then depending on how long really you're going to be here, um, you've got a choice then, remembering your uh, chain and rope uh, equations. If it's just chain you're using, then you're looking at four times the depth. Um, so you've probably got enough to be, we're, we're just over, I think we're at five metres now. Um, and therefore we've just probably got enough chain if we wanted and if we were going to stay for a long time to get as much weight as we can on the seabed so it's pulling laterally or horizontally uh, against the anchor to keep it well and truly um, dug in um, all that weight of chain uh, on the seabed lying flat and as the boat went backwards there it allows you that opportunity to uh, to pay out more chain and lie it down on the seabed as you go back from where you put the anchor on the seabed itself so in other words you're left with a tail rather than putting it rather than putting it uh, all in a big heap of chain on top of the anchor best way to try and do it get the anchor down at the depth using your uh, uh, chain markers if you've got them certainly a good idea to add them if you haven't yet um, get it down with at least two meters of chain over then a slight blip of reverse watch the anchor start to grab and as soon as you get that tension we saw in the chain uh, that means it's dug into the um, sand and gravel that we know was under here and then you can pay out that bit more chain um, Ideally, and if you're staying for a long time, then at least four times if it's chain and six times if it's a, a mixture of chain and rope that you're putting down there, six times the depth that is. Uh, and you can see there, you can see the yacht obviously sat there with the tide, but we in fact uh, are going to be more, more susceptible to the uh, wind, as I mentioned earlier, um, until the boat settles. But certainly we got a good grip there. We were ticking over, just taking it back slightly, saw it grip and it actually stopped the boat when the anchor dug into the, uh, to the seabed there. It actually brings the boat to a stop. So only a tiny blip of reverse, just enough to get the boat moving backwards. And then as the anchor grips, uh, you do physically see the boat stop as, uh, as the anchor sinks in. So a really good indication and uh, difficult to judge all that and difficult to see the tension on the uh, anchor chain there if you're merely deploying um, from the helm station itself. So uh, ideally if there's two of you then one up here can take care of the pin, you can take care of the, uh, the visual look to the tension in the uh, anchor chain uh, and just send uh, some uh, agreed hand signals back to whoever's at the helm there to um, to do the bringing the boat to a stop and or getting it into reverse. 
So once we're set, I just pop the pin back in there. Keep that stowed there. And then stow the remote. And then what you can also do is release that. Release that red catch. That allows the uh, clip there that we dropped at before to drop against the teeth of the uh, windless cog. And then uh, just, uh, just allow that to engage with the teeth and now you'll see that you'll see there that it's taken the tension out of the chain uh, and therefore taken the uh, pressure or the stress off the uh, motor itself so the movement of the boat is now being held by the little clip here in the teeth rather than being held on the uh, on the motor which would obviously cause wear and then uh, what I also do is pop back in um, back to your home screen to your settings screen and then on this um, GPS map 8410 XSV system you've got uh, an alarms there and a navigation and that's where the uh, anchor drag is onto the anchor drag make sure it's switched on um, I normally set ours at in and around 15 meters you can obviously set your own radius by tapping set radius there's some presets there as you can see or indeed if we wanted to set it at say 10 meters click on other uh, clear it and then uh, 0 0 1 0 so that's set at 10 meters done you can see the green circle there just came down from 15 down to 10 um, and if you think your boats now settled and the chain is taut then you can uh, just hit recenter and there it gives you that green circle around the boat 10 meters uh, and if the boat was to uh, stray around the edge there or over the edge there, then it sets off an audible alarm. Um, so that's your anchor alarm. Uh, ready to stick the kettle on. And we keep the um, Ayala chart stuff um, in a sort of little folder just uh, behind the seat here, um, together with some other bits and bobs. Um, key urgent radio transmissions things like that reminders uh, obviously some paper charts of the uh, haven estuary in case our electronics fail but um, they're um, in this little sort of grab folder if you like ready to hand there's the IRA charts that we were looking at a second ago um, and uh, all the uh, the index or the key to the uh, to the paper charts and then we keep uh, other information about the haven itself, um, some reminders of course about um, lighting, uh, some information there about the zip wakes, uh, information here about uh, lateral marks and voyage um, in and around um, in and around the UK and Europe, um, your cardinal marks, um, reminders, so just general information that um, that may uh, fade with time since the courses we did um, it just allows a quick ready reference to uh, something you might be approaching um, that's of use so uh, quite handy something like that and keep ready to hand in your boat that uh, you can lay your hands on if you need to in a hurry and you can see that if we now actually zoom in no, we're right in, but you can see there the movement of the boat just being traced uh, by the track system of the GPS map um, and unsurprisingly it's laying down what looks like a bowl of spaghetti because we're anchors fairly well taken and therefore we're just going to move around slightly with the wind but certainly not towards our 10 metre green square. Uh, of course, if you haven't got uh, the electronics to give you um, an alarm, then uh, Nikki will explain to you uh, an alternative way of uh, making sure that you're not dragging the anchor or to uh, give yourselves an idea that you're not dragging the anchor. Yes, yeah, so what you need to do is to look in the distance and find two transit points. So you want something on the horizon that's solid and not moving like that and another one that's just behind it like that so I'm looking over here um, oh, yeah. and there are a number of rocks so I've got a smaller rock that I'm pointing to 
um, as the first transit marker and then just beyond that is a taller rock um, and the two line up the two peaks of the rocks line up so if that stays the same um, over a period of time then we'll know we're not dragging you can have other transit points as well if um, you wanted to you could look the other side of the boat and do the same thing um, but generally one will be fine Yeah, so that's transit points, um, if you haven't got an electronic way of, of uh, keeping track of anchor drag. Um, and the other thing actually, if this anchor drags, what we also notice is that you can almost hear it. It sends, as the anchor drags, because it's 14 kilos of uh, metal on the base of the seabed, as it drags and hits perhaps, I don't know, little bits of rock, or indeed uh, as this chain moves around on the roller, you actually hear that noise, that sort of metallic noise as it drags, so you get a very a, a pretty good early indication or you certainly get used to that noise relating to anchor drag. So as you get used to it, you'll, uh, you'll pick up those signs as well. Um, and certainly, of course, if you're tidal, like, uh, like most of our boating is, um, then if you've got a tide round here in the Haven Estuary, um, we've got tides that are eight, nine metres sometimes. Spring tides are certainly um, eight and a half, nine metres. Some of the some of the largest uh, ranges in Europe, and um, that means that of course at one point an anchor could be uh, could be dug in and safe and sound, and about three or four hours later, you could have lifted eight metres, nine metres in the water, and uh, you know your anchor's now started to lift out of the seabed. Wind gets up, and very quickly you could be. Uh, you could be dragging the anchor so um, they are certainly the transit points the anchor drag on the uh, GPS map um, and of course just knowing the signs and hearing the noises of your own boat um, are all indications that you uh, that the anchor may have just lost its footing on the seabed and you either need to let more out more and more rope out uh, or indeed reset the anchor completely and then uh, <clears throat> once the anchor is down to where you want it to be then to take some of the strain off the uh, windlass you can just uh, release this little red catch which allows this uh, this little um, catch here to release against the um, teeth of the windlass um, and then you can lower you can just lower it down until the teeth there see the teeth have now gripped the uh, windlass and will now the strain is now on the uh, windlass rather than on the motor. And finally, one other thing um, which you can do if you're going to be on a mooring or on anchor, should I say, uh, certainly for overnight or similar, to really take a lot of strain off uh, the windlass unit itself, um, the motor, the chain, everything, is you can um, you can thread through your. Uh, attached to your front cleat there through the fair out through the fair lead and then you can thread a small uh, rope through your uh, a point through the anchor chain there and then obviously back up through this fair lead and uh, tie it off on the other cleat there and allow the whole weight of the um, or the pull that the anchor is creating or that the tide might be creating by pulling against your anchor um, it's a lot of the strain then is taken by that rope um, rather than anything that uh, comes up here and uh, and beyond so we carry a small bit of rope obviously it's got to be a pretty small bit to go through this chain on the uh, 895 um, but uh, but if you get a piece of rope, it doesn't need to be more than about eight, ten foot long around that cleat. Obviously through your, through your fair leads each side, tied off that end, um, threaded through the chain, just sort of below your roller there. And that really helps to take some of that strain um, off if you're going to be anchored uh, for any significant amount of time. Uh, first and foremost, before we take the anchor up then um, power the engines up uh, it takes a lot of power out the batteries the uh, windlass as you can imagine not only the weight of all the anchor and the chain um, lifting through that windlass but certainly um, 
if you started to wind in the chain and um, weren't powering forward or something with the boat it would mean that the chain and the anchor is actually pulling the whole weight of the boat which could be a four or five tons so needless to say um, always run the windlass or always run the engine should I say before you uh, before you look to uh, use the windlass when we're about to uh, bring the anchor up um, then come up the front here I always prefer to lift the anchor from the actual anchor locker itself rather than using the helm station control because you can then physically see a where your anchor's lying which direction which direction I might want um, uh, Nicky or vice versa to point the boat and or to move slightly forward just engage the engines to take the strain off the windlass motor so that as you see there with the chain starting to go down out through the water and then off and away if we just started to use the windlass then it would tend to actually pull the boat um, which obviously is a lot of uh, weight five tons odd for the windlass to be actually pulling along towards the anchor point so that's when we just engage the engines tick over or slightly higher and then if you're up here you can then see as the boat comes forward where the strain is being taken away from the uh, windlass and the anchor chain is now or is going towards the more vertical position um, and then as you're lowering uh, or raising the anchor you can just uh, take this pin out um, which just then allows the anchor to pass that point there um, without hitting this uh, securing pin and then as soon as the anchor is uh, stowed away on the roller here then uh, it's just a matter of replacing the pin um, but often if you leave that pin this pin in place um, then uh, as the anchor comes up and over here or indeed going the other way as it comes down through here the back end of the anchor or front end depending on which direction it's going will catch this pin and obviously um, with uh, and can be with quite a clunk so um, it will eventually perhaps a start to bend or b perhaps wear these areas here so it's always a good idea perhaps to pop this pin out um, as the anchor actually passes this particular point so to bring the anchor uh, back up then obviously first and foremost we've just got to take the uh, take the strain off the chain which allows us then to uh, refit this little clip that gets the spring back in it set it back there slide the red stopper up which now stops the uh, stops this little bit engaging in the teeth and allows the windlass to do its job and lift the uh, and recoil the chain <coughs> and then uh, once that's done and ready to go it's then just a case of having a look down first and foremost to see roughly where our anchor is. Looks as though there we're going pretty vertically down. Um, perhaps as we take up some of the slack then we'll see that it may go out um, towards the uh, front of the boat. Um, but let's give it a wind and see, uh, see where it's showing. just now start to see it um, the anchor chain is now just starting to take up the uh, slack and it's now starting to move uh, ahead of the boat so we'll get Nicky to uh, move us forward slightly just uh, a little blip of the uh, throttle which will start us motoring forward And you can see in this lovely clear water that the chain's now gone vertical again. And so we can bring it up. Yeah, so it's directly below us there, and I don't know whether you can see it, but you can just now see right to the bottom where the uh, we've come directly over the anchor now and um, we can just see it it's about i think we're anchored in about seven meters so just see it starting to uh, bring the anchor up now i 
as a point of interest, um, about uh, two weeks ago we were in this very bay and um, another motor cruiser came in. Uh, he was hauling the anchor from, uh, from the seabed, from the helm station. Um, and as it came up, he came up with a lobster pot on the end of the anchor, um, which he actually didn't see because he was at the helm. Uh, he then started to move off with the uh, with the lobster pot hanging just below the bow of the uh, the bow roller of the anchor. Um, but then obviously uh, realised and uh, Nosa was able to, to deal with it. But it's just another good reason um, to uh, come up the front here, if you can, if there's two of you or more, uh, come up the front here, watch the anchor come up, avoid it uh, causing any damage to the hull, but particularly if it's snagged anything on the way up, you can get very early indication. Uh, as, uh, as you can see there, you've got very good vision of the anchor as it's coming up um, and it's still a metre or two below the surface see it about to break the surface and therefore uh, as it's about to break the surface we'll just take this pin out being careful not to let it land in the drink and then uh, bring the end back up and then with the swivel arrangement that we talked about earlier just here it allows the anchor to uh, always end up basically in the right uh, the right position on the roller and there we have it up just uh, restow the remote we'll fit the um, fit the stay back on the full safe and then uh, get the uh, pin refitted there we go all without falling in so that was uh, that's always a good day when I end up dry and out we go after a very pleasant lunch Last look at all that amazing bird life. Looking forward to temperatures being up around 19, 20 degrees rather than the 12 that we have today. Still lovely though in the sun. Telltale's running. So let's try and show you the uh, the manual release of the anchor that was obviously using the uh, using the manual handle there. So first and foremost, I uh, take the pin out and then just just let the uh, just let the weight of the anchor start to tip over the edge. So there's enough uh, there's enough weight pulling down, and then what you can do is grab the uh, handle. locate it just locate it in the uh, in the windlass socket for it and then it's a simple anti-clockwise turn and you'll see as soon as I start to turn it there you see the weight of the anchor starts to take over and then you can control it just by moving this back and forth but you can see how, you can see how tiny movements of the uh, manual handle there and how quick it, how quick it drops so certainly keep it under control just uh, off and on um, you'll just tiny little bit but you can see how, 
how quick that 14 kilos of course lets you uh, deploy the anchor but as I say it's not a not an everyday use you might need it in an, in an emergency perhaps but uh, but not an everyday sort of use as uh, as it does go so quick there we go so that's put about uh, Looking in the angle there, yep, yeah, that's put about 10, 12 meters down. Uh, you could literally do it in seconds. Uh, very quick process um, and very simple to do. Just tiny movements of this, doesn't need much at all. Uh, obviously, we'll tighten it back up um, before we take the key out, uh, restow the key, and then obviously, um, as I said, as soon as you've got that tension back in the windlass there, then you. Uh, then you obviously are able to bring it back up with the windlass and then um, that's the bit where if I press my uh, up button you get no movement in the chain there um, and you start thinking oh gosh my windlass is failing first thing to try then as we touched on earlier is just to get your manual handle um, turn it clockwise just make sure that it hasn't just slipped slightly and then sure enough with the slightest of turns then, uh, you're back engaged so if you ever get that position um, certainly or if the anchor's perhaps dug into the mud on the seabed um, and it just starts to spin on the windlass there uh, because there's a bit of extra strain from that digging then uh, just tighten just make sure you're you're, uh, you're completely tight here the gypsy here is completely tight with uh, a clockwise pull which which then uh, gives the windlass uh, plenty of, plenty of grip to uh, pull out the chain and here's a look at the um, anchor markers that I mentioned earlier um, set two meter intervals um, so I just grabbed a bit of chain out the locker there just to show you the space in there. See just at the beginning of the tape there, the last lot of little red markers. And then at the two meter mark, you've got these, um, these little markers that you can fit in your chain there. Uh, they come in different colors. You can count them then dead easy. We often anchor in anything between sort of four and six meters. Of course, depending on tides and how long you're there, as we talked about earlier, but um, but at least then you can count your uh, two meter markers going down. Just gives you some uh, slightly better reference um, as to what's going down to the seabed for that uh, initial bit that we talked about, putting the anchor on the seabed before you do that little bit of reverse. Uh, and then you can obviously pay out as much more chain and uh, rope as you like after that. Um, so a useful little addition to your anchor chain if you've got something similar um, well worth uh, a couple of pence to uh, a couple of quid to uh, get them added so we hope that you found this episode on anchoring useful and if you did then please give us a like and if you're new to the channel then we'd really appreciate it if you would subscribe and uh, that's going to help us grow the channel if you have any particular requests that you'd like uh, us to cover in future episodes then please drop us a note in the comments absolutely uh, yeah and uh, we shall say bye for now and um, see you very soon thanks guys bye, bye now bye. <laughs>